Hello and welcome back to another draft video. This is episode 25 of Daily Draft Logs. We're looking at a Kaldheim Premier draft I did. The deck went 5-3, and three, so we uh, got our gems back. Let's see what we did. As always, please click like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. It helps a huge amount. Let's get into this draft. Here we go. Starting with... Our good friend Clarion Spirit, this is like my pick for the Mythic Uncommon of the set. I know a lot of people would probably disagree with that, but this is just one of my favorite cards. And I think it's super, super powerful and a huge reason, reason pardon me, to be drafting a white-based aggressive deck. Of course, we don't get to see what else was in the pack because Arena Logs, sadness. But uh, anyways, hopefully they'll get those back eventually. Let's check out pick one, or pack one, pick two, I should say. So we started with Clarion Spirit in our pile. Pretty excellent start here. Uh, to follow that up, no, why why not grab an Usher of the Fallen? Uh, this card is pretty excellent. Uh, one man, two one's going to get in for like six plus damage potentially if you're on the play. Uh, and it comes down on turn one and then it dies into a one one at some point if you have a couple of mana available. Or if you're missing your two drop play for whatever reason, you could spend two mana and make a one one. Uh, so it's not an amazing card, but I think one mana, two, one in this format is just good. And then there's a little bit of upside tacked on there. So I'm looking at Usher. I'm looking at Fearless Pup as a, as a one drop in red, which is a color I really want to be in at the current moment in this format. Um, but having started with a super, super strong white card, I think Usher fills a, a great role of helping us double spell with Clarion Spirit and also play the aggro role. And then uh, in addition to that, we have Stalwart Valkyrie in the pack, which has actually moved up a little bit for me in my pick order. Just, you know, flying and first strike are two of the most busted keywords uh, that have ever existed in this game. And they've existed since the very beginning. Of course, Hexproof is probably the most busted one. But um, white and red really get to, to leverage both of those. They got a good flyer here. They got a great first striker here. Um, the, uh, the Battlefield Raptor has flying and first strike. So uh, you really get to, to leverage those in white, red. So uh, I think it's a, a question of... You know, when in doubt, take the cheaper card. So I think I'm on Usher, and then when in doubt, you know, stay with the color that, that you're in. So I do expect that we'll we'll be looking at red as this draft goes along, but we could end up black-white. Uh, that's a pretty nice color combination for aggressive white decks. So we pick up a Clarion Spirit here, or I'm sorry, an Usher of the Fallen, and away we go. All right, pick three. Herald Unites the Elves. Oh, boy. Okay, so this card's super, super powerful if you end up black-green elves. Uh, but you kind of have to get there in order for this card to be good, in which case it's it's going to be the best card in your deck. Uh, so if we take it here, we're dropping two pretty excellent, well, one excellent and one good white aggressive card. Uh, I think it's early enough in the draft that we could consider picking this up. There's nothing really good for uh, our colors here. There's nothing good in white. Uh, there's a Death Knell Berserker in black, but I think we're pretty able to wheel this if we're supposed to be in black. There's a Provoke the Trolls in red, which is not a removal spell I'm typically interested in. There's an Alpine Meadow I'm not typically interested in. Tap dual lands in an aggressive white red deck that's trying to play one drops. So I think it's okay to take the Herald Unites the Elves here and see what happens. If we, you know, get past another Elf Rare, maybe we get the 2-2 two -two green one. That'd be pretty insane. Or if we see a couple of the, the uncommon uh, Herald himself, the 3-mana three 3-2 three uh, Menace that searches for an elf. Also, there's a Masked Vandal in this pack that could come back. That counts as an elf. There's uh, aforementioned Death Knell Berserkers in the pack. That could wheel. That's an elf. So, uh, and, and Elderly Mentor, actually. Jeez, yeah. So, there's a lot of reasons to want to pick this up here. So, I think it's a good pickup, and that's what we took. All right, moving on to pick four. So, now we've, we're kind of the tale of two decks here. We've got the elf, bomb rare, and we've got two excellent white aggressive creatures. So, the if we're not taking a white card, we want to be taking green cards because uh, green-white could be sort of our off-ramp or whatever from elves into like a good green-white aggressive deck. Uh, so we'll be looking at green cards. We're also looking at white cards. Um, not looking at Hailstorm Valkyrie. This card just hasn't gotten there. Need too much snow to make it work. Uh, Return Upon the Tide is pretty interesting. Making two elf tokens is pretty sweet with... Herald unites the elves. Uh, it's not amazing. It's a little clunky and expensive. We're probably not going to be playing a reanimator game plan, but I could see kind of picking it up and seeing where it goes. But I, I think I'd rather just take Elderleaf Mentor here. 
or just take Spectral Steel. Spectral Steel is going to be really good with the 1-1 tokens that Clarion Spirit produces. And then after that, uh, it can get you back a piece of equipment uh, or another aura or something. So I think this pick is between the Mentor and the Steel. I'd probably just lean towards the Steel. Um, just because Elderleaf Mentor you can get later. Spectral Steel you can kind of get later as well, but... I think it's like a win and doubt, take the cheaper card kind of scenario. So I, I, I'm on Spectral Steel here, but I could see taking Mentor. I could see taking Return. We took Return. So I, I think in retrospect, I, I wouldn't go there. Uh, it's just not exactly what you want to be doing. I'd rather be getting on board with Elves, but I do think this card's pretty good once you're in Elves. So if you really like the upside of this rare, which I do, uh, I think you can pick that up. Try to wheel Elderleaf Mentor, and that's what we did here. Pick five. Uh, not much in the world of red-white or white-based aggro. We could pick up a Starnheim Courser. It's a little bit medium. Uh, we could pick up a Raise the Draugr, which is pretty good in Elves. It's pretty good in black-white aggro as well if we end up with a few Berserkers or some Humans or something or some Spirits, uh, as we have two of here. Uh, I think Raise the Draugr gives you, gives you that grind, gives you that card advantage, and that's sort of how black-white pushes through into the late game if it needs to and then of course in in green black it's going to be super good uh, for the same reason so i'd like taking rays here could see an argument for just picking up axe guard cavalry and just being like this pack's pretty weak let's see what happens if we just take a red card uh it's never a bad idea to take a red card and i guess i could see taking uh, starnheim course as well just to say yeah you know rays isn't that desirable we could probably wheel it uh we're not seeing any indication that green is open we're not getting past any good green cards and it's going to be tough to draft a green black elves deck if we don't see those so um bit of a yeah bit of an open-ended pack here i think i would go with raise the dragger see what we took okay we did take axe guard cavalry so again just thinking like there's really no clear signal in this pack we don't want to get too deep into black as it's not a very strong color not a very deep color we're not seeing the green signals and we just want to take a two drop and maybe return to our our uh, white-based aggro. But I think in that case, I'd probably just take Starnheim Courser in case uh, we do end up pivoting into green or black or something. But I do like Axe Guard Cavalry a good amount as a card. All right, moving on to pick six. So we've got to feed the Serpent here, which could go towards our black-green deck. But again, not really seeing the green cards. Horizon Seeker is fine, but we want to be seeing Packmate. We want to be seeing um, Mask Vandal. We want to be seeing good elf cards. We're just not at this point, so I think we need to consider dropping the elf plan, or at least, you know, being being willing to drop it at this point. I think Feed the Serpent's pretty overrated, to be honest with you. Like, if you don't have a, a board presence, this card is not very good. It's pretty clunky. It's kind of hard to cast. And the aggressive decks with equipment will just out one for one you. Like, when they have, like, a Tormentor's Helm in play, or, like, a Dwarven Hammer... Uh, if they're really doing it, like killing one of their creatures just doesn't really matter to them. Um, so there's sp specific situations where this is going to do really well for you. But I think in general, it's not where black is at its best. I think black wants to be aggressive, cast Death Knell Berserker, put an equipment on it and make you figure it out as the opponent. If, you know, can you trade for it? Uh, give them the 2-2, that kind of thing. So I do like Feed the Serpent. It's obviously a powerful card. But I don't know that picking it here sends us in a great direction. We're going to have three non-creatures uh, in our black base deck. And that's a little bit scary to me. Return Upon the Tide does not fit with the white cards. Feed the Serpent does, so we could go, you know, white-black aggro. But I'd actually just rather take another Axe Guard Cavalry as a signal that red might be flowing to us and just kind of lean into that. And we actually took the feed here. So interesting uh, that, that I was talking about not taking it. But uh, let's see where we go from there. So we have, uh, again, two good white cards, a red card that can kind of play with those, but not really with our black cards. And then we've got, you know, a, a start to an elf deck, but again, we're not seeing really any elves here, so it's going to be tough to get into that. Um, I think you just take Cold Spell Cleric here because you've got the double spell synergy with Clarion Spirit. Uh, if you end up, uh, if we end up uh, black-white, there's going to be potentially more double spell synergies there so code spell will help us with that i've not been impressed with battle shield warrior we we could take it here it'll be fine it's a three drop uh but it's a two two and you often don't have the mana for it um i do like a, it's kind of like a must kill threat but yeah i think i'd just be on the, the the cleric here i don't think i would take horizon seeker 
Uh, it could help us splash something, but Herald Unite the Night Sea Elves is not really a, a splashy kind of card. It wants you to play straight green black, in which case Horizon Seeker doesn't really shine. So I think I would take Code Spell Cleric here, which is kind of um, maybe sounds crazy, but we took Batter Shield Warrior. Um, so, you know, along the same lines, maybe sort of attracted to the fact that it's an uncommon, but I actually think Code Spell Cleric is better for this pool of. Uh, white and red aggressive cards. Uh, but I guess, you know, Batter Shield does have some synergy with the Flyers that Clarion Spirit provides, so both cards are fine. Code Spell, you can try to wheel it. Obviously, it comes around like 10th pick, um, and Batter Shield doesn't, so that, you know, is a little bit of consideration as well, but but I think Code Spell is actually the better card for the deck. Pick 8. Uh, so, again, really not seeing green. We, we see a late Path to the World Tree, which is a cool card, and uh, you know, very good in multicolor if you can activate it. It's really, really strong. I uh, lost to it today, actually, just before I recorded this video. Uh, different deck, obviously, but uh, card is still really good. Uh, with what we have, we're not going to be able to leverage it. We don't have a, a, a bunch of different colored cards that want to play together. We've got a bunch of different colored cards that want to play in different archetypes. We've got a red-white st start, a green-black start, and maybe a, bl maybe a black-white start in here. So I think to tie all that together, we just take a card like Raven's Wings. It's going to fit in any deck. It's not going to be particularly powerful in any of them, but it'll be pretty good. It can push through some damage. Uh, give you a little bit of inevitability into the late game. I, I still think it's a it's a good card to have an access to one copy of in an aggro deck in case you end up in a board stall where you just need to push through the last four or five points of damage and your opponent's starting to stabilize. So I would take it here as a card that we could for sure play. We took Path, uh, and I don't really like that pick, but that's what we did. On to pick nine. We wheel a Code Spell Cleric and still not seeing any green, not seeing any good black. So I think at this point it's time to drop the dream of elves uh and just take code spell cleric here which is going to fit with this core of white and red cards which is honestly probably already better than the core of black and green cards we have uh if we really stuck to it you know maybe path could end up opening up a splash and maybe we can force an elves thing but i just don't think we have enough here and we're not seeing enough signals that green is going to be open to to really do it so i'm on code spell cleric yet again and this time we did take it and rounding at the pack uh, pick up an Ascent of the Worthy over pretty much nothing. I guess we could take Warhorn Blast, but I don't think I've ever cast that card. Wheel of Death Knell Berserker, so we're thinking maybe Black-White. Wheel an Elderleaf Mentor, which we can pick up here. Uh, I don't think Black-Green is going to happen, but uh, we're not losing out on anything, so we'll just grab it. Raise the Draugr is pretty nice. And then a pick 14 Axe Guard Cavalry. So up until this point, I'm thinking maybe we're going to be Black-White Maybe we're going to be red-white. We'll see. Uh, you know, the late raise is kind of nice. The late berserker is kind of nice. But I think when you get a pick 14 Axe Guard Cavalry, that says to me that nobody's really interested in, in playing red. We haven't seen a lot of red cards uh, that are excellent. But this, to me, says that they just weren't opened and people didn't take them. So I think from here, you have to think we're going to be red we're going to be seeing good red in pack three. Therefore, we should try to draft towards that in pack two. So we want to stick to, I think, white red from here. And I think this is the reason why. Uh, pick 15, we see Carful Countermaster. So we could off-ramp into black-white, but I'm still going to be biasing towards red-white, which means we're going to be prioritizing white cards first because it fits in black-white and red-white. And we're going to be prioritizing red cards second because I believe it's super open from the right. And then we're going to be taking black cards if they're powerful enough and happen to be there all right on to pack two so red white uncommon but unfortunately it's not very playable um the other cards in this pack that i like are stalwart valkyrie and i guess kennel master or coma's faithful but those aren't really on the same page as valkyrie Immersturm raider is a card i'll play it's not a premium two drop but it does play a role in your deck protecting you from flood and and Maybe actually finding you a land drop if you need to. This card is definitely better than it looks. And the Berserker creature type can matter sometimes. A little bit more in black than in in, in, uh, in red-white. But um, still a pretty solid card and we'll look to wheel it here. I think we want to just take Stalwart Valkyrie and add to our core of white cards. And that's what we do. On to pick two. Oh yeah, my boy. Battlefield Raptor. Uh, my pick for best white common. Uh, I think by the end of the format everybody's going to be on that page. We'll find out. Uh, there is a Tormentor's Helm in this pack, which is kind of tough to pass. And I know I said we're going to prioritize red, but we're going to prioritize white a little bit more. We still don't know for sure that we're going to be in red. 
uh, although I believe that we will end up there. Um, but we'll just snap up the Raptor here, passing all these silly snow cards that aren't any good. Uh, Elven Bow is quite sweet as well. I could see an argument for maybe taking it and, and thinking about green-white aggro slash still black green elves. But, uh, man, I love the Raptor, and I think it's the right pick here. Um, on to pick three of pack two. So pretty priced into white, thinking about red, and now we get past a bomb uncommon in Dwarven Hammer for red. So from here with that pick 14 cavalry and now picking this up, pick three says to me that red is open in both directions. Uh, this is the best red uncommon by a lot and should be taken by now if uh, one of the two people to our left are in red so i think we're going to see more red this pack and next we're going to snap this up and we're boros from here i think pretty easily uh here we decide between coatswell cleric and dwarven reinforcements you could play cinderheart giant if you have enough gold vein picks unfortunately those are hotly contested right now and super overrated so you're not going to see them very often but uh if they cool down a little bit and you start to get past them again then uh this giant can actually become a thing so, do we need a Dwarven Reinforcements, or do we need a Code Spell Cleric? I think you take Dwarven here. I'm not as high on it as a lot of people are, but, um, you know, Code Spell Cleric is not super strong. We don't have any 4s yet. Uh, Dwarven Reinforcements is very, very good with Dwarven Hammer as well. So, I think th for those reasons, uh, we'll snap it up here, and we do. On to pick 5, we'll... Oh, we could grab another Battlefield Raptor, grab a Gold Vein pick. At the moment, we don't have any equipment aside from the hammer and you would like a piece of early equipment to go on your raptors to go on your tokens that clarion spirit provides so i think we do take the pick here over the raptor unfortunately i love both cards uh, and we did end up taking the pick so pretty strong uh boros direction here from, from here on out uh so now we're deciding between braggart and code spell cleric i don't think master skull really fits in these decks it does give you a little bit of late game grind but I just don't think that you're going to need that most of the time. So I think we grab Cleric here, just mostly because we have Clarion Spirit. If we didn't have the Spirit, I would actually probably grab Braggart. This card is actually pretty good as you get into the late game. Some decks just can't deal with it, and uh, it does grow pretty fast. So, uh, But, you know, you can get either card pretty late. I think Code Spell Cleric is a little bit better for our deck right now. Oh, we actually took Master Skull. That's interesting. Maybe because we have a Sense of the Worthy, and you can loop it, but I don't think that's a thing. I would just take the cleric here and and uh, and be happy to see it. So red and white kind of drying up in this pack is a little bit a uh, little bit nerve wracking, but this pack is very weak, so we can also just presume that there wasn't much good happening here. We'll just snap up an Immersturm Raider to fill out our curve, protect against flood, all that good stuff, and that's what we do. Pick eight. Oh boy, not much. <laughs> Doesn't feel too good. Uh, I guess we take way down as a, a black option. But I think we're so deep into red, and we actually have a good core of red cards that it's very unlikely we're going to end up uh, black at this point. But but I think, uh, yeah, we will take that. And then we'll round out this pack and, sure, take a Trickster God's Heist for the Vault progression. Uh, Dusk Wielder, yeah, maybe as a card we end up playing. Wheel of Code Spell Cleric. Uh, Warhound Blast, sure. Mistwalker, sure. So actually didn't end up being a great pack for us in terms of red-white. Uh, picking up that Dwarven Hammer was great. Uh, but other than that, not not too much. I guess the Gold Vein pick was pretty helpful. So I still believe that the signals are saying we're supposed to be we uh, Boros, and maybe these packs were just weak. I didn't see anything absurd coming around in other colors. Uh, and, you know, pack two signals are a little bit deceptive anyways. So uh, we're going we're gonna to stay strong in, in red-white, I think, going into pack three, and hope, hope the packs break our way. Our deck is not great at the moment, but we'll see what happens. Uh, oh boy. All right. Well, we get to snap up another Clarion Spirit. So uh, the draft is helping us out a little bit here. Tuscary Firewalker we would like in the deck as well, but the Spirit is way too good. Um, we've got double Code Spell Cleric and two other one drops that we're interested in playing. Uh, and we would even take more at this point to, to support two Clarion Spirits. So that's real nice. Snap up a Demon Bolt here. So getting hooked up. That's getting lucky in the first couple of picks there. And yeah, we'll grab a Run Amuck. I really like Run Amuck a lot. People are trying to block you with four toughest creatures, and this just blows them out and does a ton of damage to them. Love it. Let's take that. Uh, Axe Guard Armory. That's an interesting one. We don't have any runes or bound and golds yet. You can take this and try to set up a situation where you can search up a bound and gold or a rune plus an equipment, and then it becomes pretty good from there. 
I haven't really had that happen, although I understand that it is possible. So, like, you know, I could see taking it here. I could also see just trying to wheel it. These, these lands come around pretty late if you're in the color pair and nobody else is. I think at this point we just kind of need creatures. I'd be pretty interested in this Doomscar Oracle or this Code Spell Cleric as um, cards that can, can activate our Clarion Spirit and fill out our curve and carry equipment and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think I'd be on Oracle here just because we don't have that many threes yet. Uh, and that is what we took. Pick five. Oh, yeah. Besker Shieldmate. One of the best white two drops if you're playing an equipment game or or what what have you uh carries a dwarven hammer quite nicely comes down on turn two double spells with clarion spirits is doing everything we want we'll grab that yes uh pick six snap up another run amok uh worth noting that wings of the cosmos is a playable card but run amok is definitely better yes uh pick seven yeah, I guess we'd take a Craven Hulk. We don't have that many fours yet. We've got two Axe Guard Cavalries to haste it out. There's nothing else in this pack, so sure. Not really a great card in Red Aggro, but uh, certainly a passable one. Here we'll pick up a Code Spell Cleric to support the Clarion Spirit. And rounding out this draft, we wheel the Firewalker from the first pack. So this confirms our suspicion that red was open from the right and just that nobody at the table is interested in red at this point. Uh, I mean, I guess... Somebody took Breakneck Berserker over it, which is a little bit weird, but I guess it's Arena, so you never know what people are going to do. Uh, I, I can't ever think of a reason why you would want to do that. Uh, but anyways, red open from this direction. We're seeing that here. And um, rounding out this pack, Braggart might make the deck. Armory does come around on the wheel, as we said. If nobody's in this color pair, you're going to wheel these. So you don't need to spend picks on them. Raiders Carve, probably not going to make the deck, but sure. Seize the spoils, probably not, but sure. And there you go. So we end up with uh, a solid, solid white red aggro deck. And there was a couple of opportunities that we maybe like missed out on taking, I don't know, like an, an extra code spell cleric. Didn't end up mattering much. Um, yeah, didn't really pass too much. Played around with the, the elves idea for a little bit, but you know, quickly saw that it was getting cut and just moved into red, moved into white. It's always a safe place to be. Uh, if you know you're not sure what the table's doing, that the, these colors are so deep at common, and the aggressive decks come together so easily, that uh, I think it's worth uh, just speculating on the odd red card and seeing what happens. We ended up playing Warhorn Blast, which makes sense to me with double Clarion Spirit. Um, not really anything else. Uh, we're also a bit low on playables too. Not really anything else we'd want to bring in. Maybe a seize the spoils, but there's nothing we want to splash. We don't have very expensive cards. We're able to play 16 lands quite comfortably with uh, only two actual four drops in Braggart and Craven Hulk as Valkyrie and Dwarven Reinforcements uh, can can fill a two drop role. And uh, yeah, just a solid deck. You know, Double Spirit was pretty lucky. Dwarven Hammer maybe a little bit lucky as well. But you know, these cards just <laughs> these cards just come together and and create a deck that's easy, pretty easy to draft and, and, you know, not too hard to pilot. The games go pretty quick. So I really like this style of deck and we got a five, three result with it. So, uh, you know, very happy with that. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments because that's what that section is for. And uh, you can also leave links to your draft logs if you'd like for me to feature them and review them on this channel. Uh, you can do so on my Discord channel, which is linked in the description below, or you can leave them in the comments. You can find me on Twitch. You can talk to me there about all this kind of stuff, twitch.tv slash music. Uh, until next time, please do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps the channel a lot. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.